Hi folks, I'm Tim, and we're going to discuss if multiple subwoofers are worth it. I'd like to give you the short answer to this question, but there really isn't one. There are multiple factors that need to be taken into account. The first of which is, do you have space for multiple subwoofers? Some people in some scenarios, whether it's in your living room or a den or some other place or a small office, you may not have space for more than one. So does that mean you should skip getting just one? No, not by any stretch of the imagination. Even a single subwoofer can definitely add to the weight, depth, and heft that any system has. Even if you have full range speakers, a subwoofer can definitely add in and help out on not just the low end, but the whole sense of space on up through the mid range as well. However, with that said, no matter how well you place that single subwoofer in your room or take the time to tune it, you will always be making pretty heavy, what's the word I'm looking for? Sacrifices. That's it. On what you're hearing. Because really, you're going to have some sort of dip or you know a peak or a null that you're not going to be able to get rid of. You're only going to be able to shift around, move, change the shape of or alter in some way. You won't be able to flatten it out. And most of the acoustic treatments that you get aren't going to help in the actual deep bass region. Let's say from 100 hertz on down. It's They're big, they're bulky, and they're expensive. Basically, if you're looking at buying those, you should just look at buying multiple subwoofers because it could very well be cheaper. So... Adding a subwoofer allows you the ability to tune the pair so that your second subwoofer, let's say, can fill in the gap or gaps that your first subwoofer just can't possibly take care of. Now I'll show a graph up on the screen and it's going to show two lines. The line that dips way down low is a green line and that shows if I have just my single subwoofer up front running and that's just about the optimal spot for that subwoofer if I move that anywhere else um, the response actually gets a little bit worse than what you see on the green line and these measurements were taken from just the sweet spot so again a lot of people say you know well if you're gonna have theater you know home theater you need to have multiple subs so that you have seat to seat consistency well Multiple subs does help get you seat to seat consistency, but it also helps immensely with just consistency in a single seat to help give you a much flatter bass response. Now, once you've got your first subwoofer tuned and set up to the room, then you can add in the second one. And as you add that in, you have to start, you have to tweak placement, um, you have to tweak DSP settings. Um, phase, all these different characteristics to get it to mesh in. Just buying two subwoofers and plugging them in and turning them on won't get you great response. In fact, it has a higher likelihood of giving you worse response than just one because you have to tune these devices so that they work in tandem, which takes a bit of trial and error. So if you're not willing to put in a good handful of hours in tuning these, especially if you're going to do it by ear. It can be done. Uh, you find a recording that has, you know, good, good bass in it that when you move around the room with just one subwoofer, you can hear um, definite differences in the volume, you know, where it goes, gets real loud or gets real soft. You can use a track like that to sort of place your subwoofer, the first subwoofer where things sound the best, and then as you add the second one in, you can move that around and try to figure out where that sounds the best. There are some videos uh, on other YouTube channels about the subwoofer crawl and things like that, um, that I'll try to find a good one and link that down below so you can check that out. I don't think there's any need for me to <laughs> redo that. And what I've found though, is being able to use software like REW is immensely, immensely helpful. And as you can see in the graph that I, I've put up, the red line is the response that I get with two subwoofers in the sweet spot. And as you can tell, you know the uh, um, the granularity on this graph is actually 
pretty detailed. You know, we're only uh, each line is about 5 dB difference. So I don't think I have any more than a 10 dB shift between the highest and the lowest point, um, anywhere between uh, 20 and 100 hertz. That uh, that didn't just happen, you know, magically. It wasn't just just plug in the two subwoofers and there you go. Uh, it took almost a week of you know spending an hour or two a day tweaking things um, and figuring out where the best positioning in the room for everything is and uh, the DSP settings on the subs. So that brings me to another point. If you're not running an AVR receiver that has uh, built-in DSP controls where you can uh, manually manage what's being sent to each subwoofer and, and work on delays and crossovers and things of that nature, then getting a subwoofer with built-in DSP uh, is paramount. Uh, at the very least, if the sub doesn't have, you know, uh, active DSP that you can control from, say, a smartphone, you need to at least have um, a, a polarity inversion switch on it to go from 0 or 180 degrees out of phase. And also a uh, variable phase switch that will let you go anywhere from 0 to 180 with uh, um, anything in between, not just from 0 to 180. So the subs that I have are the SVS SB2000 Pros, and they do have DSP built in that allow both of those things, and they also allow for um, graphic, equalization, graphic equalization so that you can help tune things at the very end. Once you've gotten things the best that you can get with the two subwoofers using only the, um, the phase shifting and time alignment, then you can take a look at larger scale problems and use the DSP to try to correct those little things. Something like a, a 17 dB down, which you can see in the graph is what uh, I get around 37 hertz. You can't DSP that out. You know, that's not going to, you can pump all the energy you want into that, a huge trough that's there, and you're not, it's just going to make things a whole lot worse. Like I said, you can move one sub around and you could help bring that up a little bit, but without the aid of the second subwoofer, to come in and take care of that, you're just you're not going to get it. And to tune the second sub to fill that in, you need to be able to time align it or otherwise shift the phase anywhere between zero and 180 degrees, because it's not always just the zero or the 180 that do it. Um, although those are very helpful settings to have. Multiple subwoofer setup certainly isn't for the faint of heart. It's a labor of love. And if you're willing to put the time in, you can reap some fantastic benefits. If you're not willing to put that time in, or you don't uh, want to, or you don't have the time to put that time in, that should not discourage you from getting a single subwoofer. Because again, you can fill in the sound, and you can move it around, and you can certainly improve the quality of your system with a single sub. So don't let this be a deterrent, like, oh, if I can't afford to then I'm just not going to bother to even get one or I don't have space for two. No, definitely get the one. It will certainly help you out. And on that topic, if you can set up two, if you have the desire to figure out how to do it and uh, the space to do it, don't get, don't let yourself get held up on the fact that perhaps you can't afford the best subwoofer you can get times two. What I did in my case was I actually bought a series lower than what I was looking at because I had been looking at the SB3000s, but getting two of those was just a little bit out of my budget. So it is far better, in my opinion, to go further back in your budget and get two that are less expensive because if you have one that is fantastic, but at your listening position, you can't hear most of the frequencies that actually matter, then it doesn't really make a big difference if it's a super fantastic subwoofer. If you can afford two for that price, then even though it may be a slightly, you know, on paper, less of a, of a driver, the fact that you'll be able to hear it more flat and even from the, you know, upper bass to the lower bass regions will make it even that much more satisfying. As for seat to seat consistency versus just consistency across the frequency spectrum in one seat, I found that in my tuning it for just the one sweet spot seat, 
it did improve all the other seats that I have in my listening room slash theater room. Now, those were my main objectives to get those tuned. That's even that's the next level of time investment there because you have to start taking a lot of measurements in all the different seats and each little um, adjustment that you make to the sub in placement or on the DSP will have a vast effect on all the different seats. So you have to go back and re-measure everything, which you can really do it. If this is like a labor of love for you, then I certainly encourage it. But again, if you want to maximize the value, my recommendation is take your budget that you were looking at for one subwoofer, maybe add a little bit to that if you can, and buy two subwoofers for that price, like I said, that need to have either built-in DSP functions or connect to an AVR in which you can control each subwoofer independently or have built-on controls in the back for varying either time delay or the phase, you know, in a continuous manner, not just a polarity switch that goes between the 0 and the 180. And if you get to and you take the time to use something like REW or if you can just use just your ears, to get those two set up for the sweet spot, you will find benefit all across all of your seating. That's my uh, slightly long-winded answer on whether multiple subwoofers are worth it or not. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content of mine, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get a notification when my new content comes out. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks so much.